Hello everyone, it's David again. I'm going to give you guys an update uh, on, uh, I guess, close this out for this series anyway. Uh, first, apologies for not getting one out live yesterday. Uh, right after the hurricane, we were able to get out. We were just way, way, way too busy because um, we're not only doing this for the, the vlogs we're doing here, but we also, uh, this is a job as well. So, you know, we had work to do and uh, uh, getting video for media and whatnot. And uh, so we were working mostly and there was just so much going on so fast and too much to capture. We just couldn't get out and, uh, and do the extra stuff like this. Um, but you'll be able to see in the video clips and stuff um, what we were seeing and those of you that were watching the live video streams uh, were able to see it. Um, we're back in Austin now, Cedar Park actually, uh, rested up on the way home and uh, weren't nearly as exhausted this time because we got plenty of rest so that was a good thing. Damage for the most part was, the, the bad stuff was confined to the seawall, it wasn't nearly as bad uh, once you got more inland and even the areas that were flooded on the north side mostly were not that deep I mean you could wade in them there were people wading in them up to waist high um, as far as that goes so I mean the, the damage along the uh, the seawall was incredible and anything outside the seawall mostly didn't make it or had pretty heavy damage uh, the exception was uh, one hotel I guess it was uh, and it had some fairly good damage, but uh, I think there were a couple of condos, but we couldn't even get anywhere near those because they were even isolated from from it when we got there. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, I mean, by the afternoon, uh, southbound I-45 was open. Uh, I mean, northbound, I'm sorry, uh, was open. Even though in some places you had to navigate debris, it was open at least down to uh, one lane in some places it was open to three uh, they were trying to clear the southbound lanes but uh, it's not going to happen for a few days because there are fleets of yachts and debris in some cases three four feet deep um, so but you know crews could come in and they were coming in and anybody that had a vehicle wanted to leave could leave but nobody that was official was not official was allowed to come back in I mean, just media and uh, emergency crews that was it no, nobody was, else was coming back in um, and rightly so, there was no need, there's no power, uh, the water's been shut down by the city. And that was another thing about the fires, and I heard some criticisms uh, about why the firefighters weren't fighting the fires, and I talked to uh, one of them, and uh, the problems they were having uh, was A, it was lack of water, uh, because the only way they could have any water was to go down to the bay and siphon it back into their, their apparatus uh, to have water, because the city shut down the water the night before. To hopefully not contaminate the system when things flooded, so the hydrants had no pressure at all, and uh, you know, so there was that issue. And then the wind was still pretty gusty and pretty high, so shooting water any distance uh, was very difficult. And then uh, there was also um, the, the the accessibility. I mean, even in places where the water was only a couple of feet deep, you really can't take fire apparatus down into that. And there was telephone poles across the road or debris or, uh, I mean, we saw fire hoses draped across poles that they dragged down there. In some cases, there was fire hoses laying around they had to abandon. Um, the, the two big fires that we saw was the, uh, the boat warehouse place um, the night before, before the hurricane came in, which totally destroyed uh, because they couldn't get to it. And then the uh, fire... Uh, at the apartment complex, which was still raging even when we left it. Uh, they just couldn't put it out. Uh, there was a few other isolated fires, but those were the two really big ones that went on. Um, looters early on, of course. Police got out early and they were mostly ignoring the looters at first, and then we started seeing them stop a few, but mostly they were guarding the large piles of debris from the, the businesses uh, along the, that coast thing or blocking uh, access to streets that were flooded that they couldn't get down. Uh, seeing some uh, small boats and watercraft, airboats, things like that, they were going up the streets to use it. Even in those, there were people walking in them, uh, you know, waist high, maybe even chest high, but 
Um, you know, we could tell the water had been higher than that earlier, obviously, you know, but it wasn't washing away homes except evidently out on the west end, some of the shots you've undoubtedly seen on the helicopters, but we just couldn't uh, get down there. The police we talked to that blocked the way down there said they didn't know what was going on because they couldn't see it. Um, they couldn't get down there, so the helicopter shots, what you saw was what, what they knew, and that was it. Um, the uh, areas inland in the main part of Galveston, to be honest, damage-wise, were not that bad overall. Um, there were a few incidents you would see damage that was significant, but mostly it was just minor roof damage, windows were blown out, um, maybe some of the window coverings people had put on were blown off. Um, trees, of course, some power lines, um, things like that. Um, but most of the main center of the residential and businesses and stuff fared fairly well. Um, so what you see on TV is mostly the, the really graphic stuff, which of course is what you're going to see on TV. And, and uh, by far, from what we saw, most of it was either uh, right along the seawall drive there or uh, along I-45 going out or the um, the other road there. I can't think of the street number at the time that cuts over from 45 to the beach because they were ex exposed to the wind and the water and, of course, everything piled up against them. The railroad that goes uh, along I-45 going out is no longer. Most of the railroad ties are up on I-45. I'm sure the rails are in the bay somewhere. Um, when we went out on 45, where they were cleaning it, the boats and things up on there were crazy. you never seen so many ice coolers in your life. I don't know where all those came from. And uh, I forgot to get the video of all the nipples on the side of the road. There was a place we stopped at to take some pictures, and there were thousands of baby bottle nipples in little plastic, like they come when you sell them, along the side of the road. I'm assuming they were stored somewhere around there and, and got washed out. I've never seen some of those in my life. It's just a little amusing anecdote we noticed there on the side of the road. Um, most of the people we talked to uh, were in pretty good spirits, um, believe it or not. They were more upset. They were kind of inconvenienced for a while than anything else. The only ones that seemed kind of in despair and asked for anything were the, uh, the homeless people that were by homeless, the ones that were homeless before the hurricane, asked for money, asked for cigarettes, asked for water, in that order. They were more worried about money and cigarettes than they were some water to drink. The people from the poop deck, we ran into them again where we shot the, the video for uh, the Fox News uh, deal. They uh, made it, the bar made it, they said it would, that always has on the hurricane, so, you know, what do you say to that? It's kind of ironic. Um, but they were in good spirits and much more sober today, though. And um, apparently we're ready to open up again later that night. So We didn't see anybody that was dead. We didn't see anybody laying around or anything like that. In fact, we didn't even see a, a whole lot of people, but there were people out riding their bikes, walking around, and uh, doing all that kind of stuff. So... You know, just, just know that what you're seeing on the media outside, at least in the main part of Galveston, um, you're seeing the really bad shots along the businesses and things that were out, and the homes and probably anybody you knew that stayed in the mainland there is probably okay. Uh, communications is very spotty. I mean, we had cell coverage from the mainland because we had uh, boosters and ties to uh, antennas and stuff so we could get it but um, there probably won't be any other communications for a while. Uh, but uh, I would imagine most of the people that stayed behind on the mainland up in the, uh, the main part of Galveston itself is probably gonna be okay. So even if you haven't heard from them, you know, I'm sure they're fine and they're getting uh, water and food and stuff in there. So, I, you know, I think they're probably gonna be in good shape. Well, it's been kind of long, but I'll go ahead and wrap this up and uh, you know keep watching for some of the video to be up and stuff like that. In fact, I think they have some of it up already. And we'll talk to you guys again.